Amen. 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 The woman, of course, is supposed to help. Help to lead. Amen. That's scripture. Amen. Help lead. She's a help me. And God wanted her to help. But listen, this is how beautiful it is. He wanted her to help from an untouched position. Meaning, he wanted her to be able to flow without having to deal with the blows of the enemy in a way that should only come to the man. Amen. So then you have the children. And the children ought to come and flow from the bottom. Now, here's a quick way to give it to you. The man is the umbrella. That's right. If he's doing right, he ought to have his wife and children under him. The umbrella. But the umbrella is not there to destroy. The umbrella is there to keep the rain off of him. That's right. Can y'all say amen? Amen. Now, you ask me a question. I had to lay, sometimes you got to put a motive out there. You got you to give the right spirit. You ask, what did you ask? Should we follow our spouse away from church to keep peace in your marriage? Okay, I'm going to give you this straight. If you're in a church of God, following God, walking with God, let me tell you a secret. No man or woman should ever follow anybody away from the things of God. Amen. Amen. If so, they're taking you somewhere they're not worthy to lead you. Amen. Now, there is, everybody said there is. There is. Please don't run it. That's why I don't like to give incomplete. Please don't run and destroy because you have the wrong spirit when you go out to do it. Uh, your husband don't have a right to take you away from your church. If it's a godly church, Amen. If it's a godly thing and you're living right, but here's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to make sure that you're doing what you should do as a godly wife. Amen. Can y'all say amen? First Peter. Huh? Chapter 3. Come on, Deacon. And verse 1. This is a good small teaching. Likewise. Likewise. You wives be in subjection to your own husband. You women that got a man that's not into the church, he don't want to come because he think the preachers are all crooks. Come on, am I talking to people? That is why when I, even at this church, I've always, since the day one, I've always, they, when I first became a pastor, was single and did all these things, and the women would come and, oh, they would bring food, man. And I, during that time, all the young men used to stay with me. I had a whole group of young men stay in the house with me. And every week, they would wait on the food. <laughs> and be waiting on all the food that was brought to them. they eat up all the food. And, um, but one thing I stood up one Sunday and I said is, Please don't cook for me. And you haven't cooked for your husband. That's right. And before you bring anything to me, ask your husband if it's all right. That's right. How many of y'all remember me saying that many times? Absolutely. Yes, These are the things that preachers could do to, to, to push. And let me tell you this. One more, can I, everybody say this is a little, just a little hint. Say hint. hint. If you're into God and you want your husband to be into God, don't go bragging to him about your pastor. Right. That's wisdom. Don't no man, want, including me, want to hear his woman keep talking about what this other man said right. while you paying the bills. That's right. Is that good advice? Absolutely. Amen. Now, if you really want that man to know that you're getting something good from that pastor, let him see the change in your behavior. Amen. Amen. And he'll say, wherever y'all doing over there, go on over there. Because right. you look like to me, you're doing better since you've been over there. Amen. Now, yeah, that's what, right. what the Bible says. Likewise, Likewise, you wives be in subjection to your own husband. Why? That. That. If any man, if any obey not the word. That, ho, 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 ho. If any obey not. The if, word. If, if there's a man out there that won't do God's word. Amen. They also may without the word. Hold on. This going to blow you away. For once in your saved, sanctified life, don't go quote no scripture to your husband. Amen. You ever heard a preacher say that? Put that Bible down. Amen. Get out his face. Y'all ain't never heard a preacher say that before, have you? I'm going to say it again. If you are a woman trying to get your husband into the things of God, put the Bible down. Amen. You don't need it in your hand if it's in your heart. That's right. Here's what you do. Here's Amen. what you do. That, that you, also may, without the word. Hold on. You never knew that was in the Bible, did you? Esther used to go up to Fred. <laughs> Every time, right? And Esther lay them out all that. They come up to the back. Oh, glory, right? 
What the, with the Bible? I had the Bible in her hand? It didn't do any good, did it? No. That's what happens when you keep pushing the Bible. Even to your men, to your wives and women. Don't push the Bible. Be the Bible. Amen. And, and after a while, they'll stop fighting. They'll see the difference in how you are. When you, listen, when you're a woman, you come into women's fellowship. You're a man, you come into men's fellowship. In this church, we don't teach the women, girl, you're grown. Don't let no man tell you. We don't, they don't teach that in the women's fellowship. So you men, don't stop your ladies. Push them to get here. When the men come here, we don't teach them, yeah, man, we, we, we cave, man, we rock, we run. We, uh, man, knock that woman down. No, sir. We teach husbands. Love your wife. We teach don't open the door for another woman and don't open the door for your own wife. Right. Don't we teach that? Amen. Oh, yes. Amen. Oh, that's good teaching. Great. Ladies, y'all ain't helping me none. All right. I'm going to fix y'all. I know what to do now. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. All right. She saved y'all, too. Y'all better. No. Okay, now listen, 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 listen. The Bible says that they may, without the word, Amen. without your Bible, be won by the conversation of the wives. You can win the man, and the word conversation means by your behavior. Conduct. Your conduct. Yep. The best way to get them. Now, to answer your question, should you leave? No. And let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Do what you're supposed to do. Do not miss your, listen to me good. Do not neglect household to be at church. Amen. Amen. I didn't say that. Listen good. That's right. But here's a thing, and I'm going to say this, and I'm going to leave it alone because we've been getting along so well. Don't you dare, if you are a real man, start with the men, we'll get to the woman. Don't you dare allow anybody, including your woman, the woman God gave you, you said, don't you dare allow any woman or man, ladies, to dictate what you do for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Am I balanced? Amen. Anybody, well, I thought the Bible said I shouldn't, uh, you know, we need to be together. I want you to listen to this devilish teaching. We got to be together. That's why I admit it, because we got to be together. If he jump off a bridge, you still got to be together? <laughs> she go to the P.O. cabinet and overdose, you still got to be together? <laughs> you men stand up and be counted for. Amen. And, ta and let me tell you this. If you love that woman, treat that woman right, she will, after a while, she won't have no problem. She won't have no problem, Amen. but she got to try you first to make sure what you're talking is for real. Because you made that promise before. Amen. Am I talking some good stuff? Amen. Now, Amen. for those of you that just, I just love them. Is that right? <laughs> think about what you think about, brother. You just love them. And that's what you ought to just love them. But let me tell you one thing you better not love more than you love God. Mm. Now, here's what happens. Some of you, they don't pull you from the church. They just pull you from your heart being into the things that are in the church, even though your body is still here. Amen. And you start to go along with stuff that ain't right to keep peace. Come on. Amen. Amen. Now, let me talk to y'all that's going to do what your mate do because you're going to roll with your husband or wife. No, rather, you know how we say it? Right or? If you're a real man, and I always start with the men first, you'll look that woman in the eye and say, honey, I love you. Notice how I started, right? Amen. You're going to end that way the way you start. Amen. I got your back, but you ain't going to take me down that road. If you want to act like the devil, you're going to act like the devil by yourself. Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Now, when you don't do that, ladies and gentlemen, 
You end up in a situation, somebody said, where did the Bible say that? I'll go ahead and give it to you. For all y'all that just got to, bo- got to be, you know, you got to live and die with your, your spouse, I'm going to give it to you straight. You'll never better do nothing for God. You're a man, and you got to get permission every minute to move. Henpeck. Mr. Softy. Yeah, you a woman, and you dictate and run over top of him. A real woman want a real man. That's right. Amen. Ladies. Amen. And you didn't compromise. Here's what happened in the Book of Acts. Amen. Come on, Deacon. I got to move. How oh, you know I'm going there? Look at the Lord today. <laughs> huh? Come on, DJ. Verse 1. Verse 1. But a certain man. I, I don't think I've ever used this one, and he was already there. Yes. Amen. Amen. Listen. But a certain man named Ananias. But a Ananias. certain man named who? Ananias. That's us. Come with, on, man. With Sapphira. Yeah. His wife sold a possession. Uh-huh. And kept back part of the price. This is for you. His wife. You get in ministry. You said, Pat, you heard what the word is this year? This year we're going to push, go forth in ministry. We're coming on out, honey. Let's get home and get serious. You heard what the word of the Lord is from the pastor. Right? Amen. You come and you move. Honey, we're going to go. And there she go, pulling. Or he, he come pulling. We ain't going to do all that. Amen. Huh? Amen. Listen to the book. And kept back part of the price. His wife, also being private to it, and brought a certain part. She knew about it. Amen. She was in cahoots. And laid it. And laid it at the apostles' feet. Yes. But Peter said, Yeah, you did some good stuff in ministry. Some of us did some things last year, did some things. You did it, but you didn't do what God told you to do. Amen. Amen. Listen. But Peter said, But Peter said, And Ananias, why, why have Satan filled that heart? Uh oh. But a preacher showed up and said, I see the devil right in here. Amen. And? To lie to the Holy Ghost. To lie not to the preacher, not to the church, but you lie to God. And to keep back part of the price of the land. And, and here's where the God, this is where the Lord uh, really gets, hang, some of us get hung up. We've done some good and tricked everybody else. Come on. But there was more God told us to do that we kept back. But man didn't see it because you did more than them. Amen. But God ain't satisfied because he already told you the price. Amen. That's and right. what they did as husband and wife is they kept back part of the price. Amen. Oh, it's quiet. That Amen. means I'm preaching good. Come Amen. on, Giga. Whilst it remained, was it not thine own? Huh? And after it was sold, then? was it not in thy own power? Come on. Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Yes. Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. You're lying to God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. Now, let me tell you what happened here. The man, everybody say, God hold who first? The man. The man, the man lied. Amen. Oh, we ain't going to do all that. Oh, who's going to do that? I ain't doing all that. I, I, I hear you. And the Lord said, you came and you ate. You came and you got free. You came and you got delivered. And then, oh, I ain't gonna, you know, guess what happened to Ananias? He dropped dead. Mm. That's what he said. That's what he said. Keep reading, Deacon. And now, now call old lady. Amen. Huh? And great fear. And great fear. Came, all the, came on all them that heard these things. Yes. And the young men arose, wound them up, carried them out, and buried them. What they do to him? Bird. And that's what they're going to do when, listen, when we get finished, be on to the next one. And it was without the space of three hours. And after. it wasn't even but three hours. Come on. When his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. His wife came in next. And Peter answered unto her. Here's for all you ladies that are going to stand behind Rome. Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. Said, now you tell me what y'all did. And she said, yeah, for so much. She said, yeah, we did it for that. Then Peter said unto her. How is it that you have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord? Why did you allow, did y'all catch that? Amen. Why did you allow your agreement to come into a place where you unified with something that was wrong? Come on now. See why you don't agree on wrong? You agree on right. Amen. Amen. Even in husband and wife. Amen. Listen. Behold. Behold. Feed of them which have buried thy husband. I don't care my children. I don't go against my children. You keep on not going against your children. That's right. Look that little baby, look that little girl, look that little boy in the face, tell them you wrong. That's right. That's right. If you're a leader in the church, you better not be leading anybody in here if you can't tell your own family you're wrong. That's right. Amen. Period. Amen. 
Amen. Come on, Deacon. Behold, behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband yes. are at the door uh -oh. and shall carry thee out. Hold on. You know what he told her? But since you done lied to and covered for him, the people that buried your husband going to bury you. Uh -oh. then, then fell she down did straightway. She did, did she did what? She fell down straightway and at his feet and yielded up the ghost. And died too. And the young men came in and found her dead and carried her forth, buried her by her husband. The moral of the story is... You still want to be together at all costs. Go. Go. Hand in hand. Somebody say, ouch. ouch. Amen. 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 You know what the moral is? Just be right. Amen. That's right. Just do right. Just treat people right. Just love people right. Amen. Huh? Ain't no time for wrong. Come on, y'all. All right. They, 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 they're barely holding on. They barely, we were we was having a, such a good time. Amen. <laughs> Give me another question. I hope I get some some. Amen. Amen. Come on. Is it possible for someone to put a curse or spell on a blood washed believer and it work? It is possible, but it is not easy. Can a blood a blood wash believer, believer somebody Amen. is saved, can somebody just walk up to you and put a curse on you or a spell? Anybody want to know the answer to that? If you're born again or God's spirit is in you saving you, can somebody randomly just put a curse on you? Can they speak a curse over you? All right? Number one, give me Proverbs 26 and 2. Then after you give me Proverbs 26 and 2, give me Proverbs 33 and 3. I'm going to show you that the curse only comes where there is a cause. That's right. The word cause means justifiable means. If it's not justified, it won't hit. Amen. Isn't that good news? Can't nobody, listen, if they could just curse you, I'd already been dead a thousand times. Amen. You know how many death threats and people telling me I ain't going to make it? I've gotten. Huh? We had to tell demons a long time ago, you better hurry up and kill us or we'll die of old age. Come on. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 26. What the Bible say? In verse 2. Come on, Deacon. As the bird by wandering, and as the swallow by flying. Then so? So the curse causeless shall not come. Okay, so now that's good news. Number one, there has to be a curse cause. Thank God people who don't like you and hate on you can't just walk up and put a that's curse right. on you. Isn't that good news? Thank you, Lord. Somebody said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Give me Proverbs 3 and 33. Let Proverbs me tell you where curses reside. Amen. Listen. Proverbs 3 and 33. What does the book say? The curse of the Lord. The curse of the Lord. Is in the house of the wicked. Hold on. You want to know where to find where curses easily attach themselves? To folks that are living wicked. Wicked. Amen. Listen. But he blesses the habitation of the just. But those who are living upright, you make it hard to be cursed. Amen. Somebody ought to say that's good news. Amen. Well, that ain't enough. Give me the book of Numbers, Deacon. Huh? We're working today. Amen. Give me numbers. Look at the book of Numbers chapter 23. Start at verse 20. I want to show you. Everybody say ba uh, Balaam. Balaam. Anybody know who Balaam was? Does anybody know who Balaam was? Yes, sir. Thank you, Elder. He was a prophet. Balaam was a preaching prophet. Okay? Balaam could walk up to you and tell you stuff that was coming into your future. Amen? Amen. Now, Balaam was a prophet, and something weird happened. Balaam started charging money. Is that right? <laughs> to give prophecy. You know, like the preachers do today. Yeah. <laughs> After they give you that word, then we want you to sow a seed. How many of y'all got a seed? I charged a seed when I gave y'all something about that was going on, or I talked to you. How many of y'all got a seed? I made y'all give me a seed. Never. Don't you let nobody middleman you and God. That's right. You don't have to pay for the hear from God. The only thing you give God for that is your life. Amen. Now, Balaam was a prophet, and the people saw an occasion to put a curse on Israel. They came to him and said, we got a bag for you. That's what the young people said. We got some money for you if you can put a curse on Israel. Balaam had heard that Israel was blessed of God. Huh? Amen. Give me verse 20. Let me show you what happened when they try to curse you and God's hand is on you. Amen. Here's what happens to him. Quickly. Behold. Listen. I have received commandment to bless, and he has blessed, and I cannot reverse it. Oh. 
He don't, now I want y'all to hear, y'all, somebody should have shouted right there. He said, I don't went in to put a curse on these people and got in there and found out that they blessed. He said, it don't matter how much power I got, I can't reverse what God has already blessed. Amen. Somebody ought to say, thank you, Lord. Amen. Now, pastor, well, where it say that we can get it if we in sin? That don't mean if you had one bad day and you made a mistake, you're open to get cursed and die. What it means is if you walk in a lifestyle, of uh, a place of where there's no repentance, are you listening? And you're going in the other direction, you open yourself up to curses. You say, where is that? Read the next verse. Amen. But he have not beheld iniquity in hold, Jacob. Hold. He said, I would curse him, but I can't. Why? Neither have he seen perverseness in Israel. Because I didn't see no iniquity in him, and I didn't see no perverseness. The Lord his God is with him. God is with him because he's walking upright, so no matter how much I try to curse him, I can't do it. Amen. Therefore, here's the good news you ought to shout about. Read the next verse. And the shout of, the, of a king is among them. God brought them out of Egypt. Come on. He have, he have as it were the strength of a unicorn. Yes. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob. Good, great. This is the part I like. There is no curse, no spell, nothing. What? Neither is there any divination against Israel. And you can't pray against me either. Come on. According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel, what have God wrought? Yes. How many of y'all know that's a good news? We got protection. Amen. One more thing. Everybody say hedge. Hedge. Everybody in this room is provided from birth by the Bible, a hedge. A hedge says that no matter what comes to you, you can never go beyond that hedge. Remember Job and Satan came to do certain things? God sent Satan to do certain things, but he also put a what? Hedge so that Satan could not overstep those things. Which means that it might get bad, but it ain't going to never get to a point that he finished you off. Amen. Has, thou, has not thou made a hedge about him? That's in the book. Amen. Chapter and verse? Job 1.10. Listen to the Bible. Has not thou made a hedge about him? I told you. And about his house? Come on. And about all that he have on every side? I told you. And you ought to thank the Lord today for the hedge that's around you. Amen. 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 Come on, y'all. Amen. Is that it? Amen. That's all the questions. Oh, yep. uh, we got three more. Oh, three yeah, more. come on. Come on. <laughs> what was the first church? When, where can I find it in the Bible? Was there a church at that time? Well, I'm not certain I understand your question, but I can tell you this. The church has evolved, and I cannot give you the whole history, but the church started off as a physical place. It started off as a place God would dwell. God would dwell in a physical building called a tabernacle or a temple. God no longer resides in that way because we are now the actual church. Okay, we are called the temple, so God doesn't live in bricks. He lives in who? Us. Here's a quick answer. The first church was officially established. Oh, I want to teach you something real quick. The first church is a woman. Okay, y'all didn't hear that. A woman in the Bible is called the first church. And that is why Jesus is said to be Mary. Watch this. Watch this. To the church. Because the symbol of a woman is the church. Stay with me. Now, Jesus is called the first and the last. I want you to watch this. He's the first and the last what? Well, I'll answer that question. Adam. We'll be out of here before 2.30. Stay with me. He says he's the first and the last Adam. Why would he be the first and the last Adam? Adam was said to be the first man. Amen. Jesus is the first man to redeem what the first man had messed up. So he's the first Adam, but he's also the... Now, I'm going to show you something. Adam had a wife. I want you to listen good. Adam had a wife. What was her name? Eve. Eve. How did God make Eve? From Adam. Amen. But how did he do it? He took Adam and put him to what? Sleep. sleep. Now, let me tell you what sleep is. Sleep is death. Amen. Oh, y'all didn't hear what I just taught you. Adam was put to death. Huh? And the Bible sleep is death. Adam was put to death. Listen good. And out of his side, or the Bible, you ever hear this story that said he took a what? Now let me tell y'all this. A rib don't really mean a bone in your cage. Don't let church folks lie. God did not take a single bone out your rib cage and make a whole woman. The word rib 
in the Bible is the word private part. What God took out of a man was a private part of that man, a part of the man that he is now missing, that he put when he created a woman, which is why all your life you spend trying to get back to together because a piece of you is lost in her. Amen. Did you hear what I said? Amen. And that's why he said the two become one. All right, now stay with me. What that got to do with Jesus? Jesus was put to death. Amen. Just like Adam, he was put to sleep. Except Jesus was put to death on a cross. Amen. When he was put to death, the Bible said, out of his side. John 19, 34. Out of his what? Side. But hold on. Same thing happened to Adam. Out of Adam's side Amen. came who? Eve. The woman. Well, when Jesus was put to death on the cross, another woman came out of him. Amen. Are y'all listening to me today? Amen. Listen to the book. John 19, 34. What did it say? But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side. And what happened? And four with came there out blood and water. Blood and water. What does blood and water represent? The life. I need you to get this. So the same way God put Adam to sleep and took a woman out of him, God would put Jesus to sleep and take another woman out of him on the cross called the church. If you want to know when the church was born, the church was born out of the side of Christ and it was manifested at Pentecost where the first official church was born when the Spirit of God fell to live in us. Amen. That is the first church. Amen. Can y'all hear that? Oh, yes. Amen. Amen. Give me the next question quick. I got 10 minutes. Good morning, Pastor. Listen. I have some questions that have been on my mind. All right, we'll try to get to a few. <laughs> we know in Genesis 128, yes. the Bible says, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth uh -huh. and subdue it. We can all agree that replenish means to fill something up again, restore to the former level or condition. This is the same thing that God told Noah in Genesis 9 and 1 after the flood. Uh -huh. So why would God have to tell Adam and Eve to replenish the earth if they were the beginning of creation? Also, since they had to replenish the earth as command, who were here before them? Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> we don't got time to go there, but I will go there. Amen. I know where you were going. That's why I was looking funny when you say replenish. First of all, let me give you a quick shot. Amen. Amen. Number one, Adam and Eve were, and listen to me good, were not the beginning of creation. They were a beginning. Amen. You see, Adam and Eve was a product of something that was already here. Not people with bodies, yes, but the ground. Did you?